Large numbers and varieties of these wild game mammals in overcrowded cages and the lack of biosecurity measures in wet markets allowed the jumping of this novel virus from animals to humans. Its capacity for human-to-human -human transmission, the lack of awareness in hospital infection control, and international air travel facilitated the rapid global dissemination of this agent. Over 8,000 people were affected with a crude fatality rate of 10%. The acute and dramatic impact on healthcare systems, economies, and societies of affected countries happened all within just a few months. You're home for a while doing school online. Politicians are emphasizing to stay home so that this whole mess can pass. Parents are either working from home or are out of work due to the mess itself. But why? Because of a virus? A virus you probably don't have and hopefully won't ever have? Let's discuss what the coronavirus is and what COVID-19 is with it. So going back to that quote, this quote came from a paper published in 2003 after the SARS epidemic had finally passed and it became a pandemic. Chang et al. in 2007 republished this information citing that SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, was due to a coronavirus and something that we should be mindful of in the future. So back in 2003, it was called SARS. It stood again for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which is a medical way of saying people with this virus developed a bad cold in the chest that often progressed to a dangerous pneumonia. SARS is the name of the disease. Like COVID-19 or coronavirus disease discovered in 2019 is the disease for this virus. SARS was caused by the virus SARS coronavirus or SARS COV. COVID-19 is caused by the SARS coronavirus 2 or SARS COV2. Both sound similar, both are related and they are each a coronavirus that causes a similar upper respiratory disease, but they are separate strains. The explosive nature of the first SARS epidemic, the high mortality, its transient reemergence a year later, and economic disruptions led to a rush on research of the epidemiological, clinical, pathological, immunological, virological, and other basic scientific aspects of the virus and the disease. That again comes from Dr. Chang and his co-writers. So how did China, and then the eventual afflicted countries across the entire planet, respond. Again from Dr. Chang. At the community level, contact tracing and quarantine of contacts, temperature checks at borders, health declarations for travelers, social distancing by suspension of schools and closing of workplaces, public education, and effective communication of information have been used to control community spread. Hopefully that and these two images sound familiar, because we're going to come back to them at the very end. Viruses exist on that border between living and non-living. They are tiny pieces of genetic material. They co-evolve. However, they need a cell to reproduce. Their genetic material, either DNA or RNA, carries instructions to build more of themselves. However, again, those instructions can only be read by another cell. Coronavirus is the second leading cause of the common cold. A virus that has the correct means to fuse with the membrane of a cell will inject its genetic material, RNA in this case with the coronavirus, that will carry genes or instructions to the cell's nucleus for reading, replication, and production of the viral parts by the cell's ribosomes. The parts are assembled at the Golgi apparatus after it's treated by the endoplasmic reticulum outside the nucleus which all are just 
one of the several organelles in this process to create proteins. New viruses are made from this process once it's hijacked. Once a high number is reached, the cell is told to kill itself and release the new viruses. Thus, the new viruses will go off and find other cells to infect. Again, this is how SARS and COVID-19 worked. A few years ago, we had MERS, M-E-R-S, also another coronavirus, which transmitted from camels to humans, primarily in the Middle East, the Middle East Respiratory Center. Coronaviruses exist in humans and other mammals. Normally, they stay with the respective hosts. The common cold rarely kills an infected person. Why? Because any good parasite infects widely, but doesn't kill its host organism. Otherwise, the parasite, or the virus itself, will die off too. So viruses tend to evolve to become less deadly in host organisms. So why did SARS happen? Because a coronavirus from bats or possibly civets crossed into a human that recently underwent a mutation that just so happened to provide this coronavirus the ability to fuse with human cellular membranes. That is incredibly rare though, right? It's true. However, coronaviruses recombinate when they exchange your genetic information with other coronaviruses and other viruses and cells often. The same thing probably happened in an exotic wildlife market in Wuhan, China. There's reason to believe it came from bats. However, no bats were sold at that market in Wuhan. So the, we scientists now believe there was an intermediate organism going from bats to an unknown organism to humans, which made its genetic diversity even more so. Sometimes, in a desperate attempt to rid the virus, the leading cells of the human body's immune system, like the macrophages and T cells, tell the body cells to kill themselves in order to prevent further infection. This complete overreaction is what causes the deadly inflammation and loss of breathing in the severe cases you read about in the news. The need for oxygen and ventilators therefore becomes really important. It's Almost like the weaker the immune system, the more desperate it becomes to save the body. This causes severity of the disease to increase with age, and those that are developing their immune systems, like newborns. From Dr. Chang. At the community level, contact tracing and quarantine of contacts, temperature checks of borders, health decorations for travelers, social distancing by suspension of schools and closing of workplaces, public education and effective communication information have been used to control community spread. That's how SARS was eventually brought under control. It was the response that many countries across the planet, including the United States had during the pandemic after that, the H1N1 swine flu in 2009. Border closures and hard quarantines don't stop pandemics. Infections and spread is going to happen. So in the face of that reality, the response is to keep healthcare services from being overloaded. You need supplies, ventilators, masks, that oxygen to be readily available. If people are spaced apart, then the infection rate or the slope will decrease and start to flatten the high exponential curve. If the curve is spaced out over time, then hospital beds, nurses, doctors, and the tools they need can be used for people as they arrive. Again, Dr. Chang and his associates looking at bats knew or suggested that this pandemic now was a possibility back in 2007. Literally called it a time bomb in southern China. If distancing doesn't happen, then the elderly are going to be eventually turned away to save those who are younger. It's called triage, tending to those that have higher value in just continuing society. That doesn't mean that they have higher personal value, it just means that they have value in actually continuing the human race in society as we know it. It's what healthcare professionals have nightmares over, and you have the reasons for high death tolls in 1918 flu pandemic and even the Black Death in the Middle Ages. Rate of infection and knowledge of infection was not very high back in 1918 and almost non-existent in the Middle Ages with the Black Death. But 
could have been used to prevent the widespread death and pandemic that they saw in those time periods. We have better knowledge and better information. So yes, by studying from home and hanging out away from others, you are saving us from a terrible future.